All right, uh, Carson Palmer, former NFL quarterback, won the Heisman at USC, loaned that Heisman to us for uh, quite some time, and then we send it back. Uh, he joins us now. He is uh, part of the plant-based uh, wellness program, the company called Level Select, and uh, we enjoyed talking to him and promoting this for a while. And it's uh, Level Select OTC. That's a new plant-based pain relief brand. And uh, they've been doing this for a long, long time. Did you play against Dion Carson? I did. I actually played against Dion his, on his comeback tour when he played for Baltimore uh, with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and that, that defense that they had in Baltimore at the very, very end. I think it was, it was obviously Dion's last year. Um, so I got a chance to play, play against him at the end of, I think he was wearing number 39 or number 49 or something really ugly out there, but he <laughs> 30, was still Dion 37. Yeah. 37. 37. That's what it was. How good was that defense? The year, a couple years before that defense was really, really good. I mean, Haloti Nada in the middle was a, a nose guard that was really tough to move. And, um, obviously Ray Lewis, Bart Scott, Ed Reed, Chris McAllister. I mean, you go on and on down the list. That was a really, really talented group. All right. Before you came on, I said that you had a surprise pick as your number one quarterback. Let me go around the room with the Danettes, and then we'll get to uh, Carson's pick as his number one quarterback in the NFL. Todd? Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Seton O'Connor. Joe Burrow. All right. Marvin? Justin Herbert. All right. Paulie? It can't be any of those three because those aren't surprises. Trevor Lawrence. All right. Carson, the number one quarterback is who? Connor was right. I, I like Joe Burrow. Yeah. Okay. I, I I was playing a game where we got to pick our our what quarterback you want, what's your your top receiver at X, your top receiver at Z, tight end. And it was funny because I ended it with Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, uh, Jamar Chase. So all three LSU guys, and then Travis Kelsey at tight end. So LSU's been pumping them out. I mean oh. that program has gotten really really good. Okay, but why Burrow over Patrick Mahomes? Uh, it's obviously a, a, a fist fight when you bring that one up. Um, but I just, he's younger. I, I'll take the younger quarterback. If I'm, if I'm going to build a program around a guy, hmm. he's got a little less wear and tear. He's a little bit younger and he's a lot cheaper right now. Cause he's still on his rookie deal as opposed to Patrick Mahomes, who's the second or third highest player, highest paid player in the league. What do you think is going to happen with Burrow and Justin Herbert as far as their contracts? And, and if you're their agents, what are you basing it off of? Like, where do you start that contract negotiation? Just a, whoever signs the next deal. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a moving target. Every year, the next guy that gets paid is the highest paid guy. So it just seems like where we're at right now, Joe Burrow is the next guy to get paid. They've been talking about a contract extension for months now. Um, so it seems like he's about to set the bar a little bit higher than whoever the last guy is that just okay, got paid. Okay, but Jalen Hurts got paid. Is Joe Burrow, does he start there with his negotiations of Jalen Hurts, or does he say, I want Kyler Murray money, or does somebody get squirrely and say, I want Deshaun Watson money? No, he just needs he needs more money than Jalen Hurts just got. Okay. He did the same thing Jalen Hurts did, except for he's done it for one more year. You know, Jalen Hurts just went to the Super Bowl and lost. Joe Burrow the prior year just went to the Super Bowl and lost. So the way that these contracts work is the next guy that gets paid gets paid a little bit more. So he should just be a couple hundred thousand dollars more per year than Jalen Hurts got and probably the same duration, probably another five-year contract. Is Jalen Hurts a great quarterback or in a great situation? That's what the world's about to find out. I mean, they, they just paid him. <laughs> They just paid him a bunch of money. They got to get rid of a couple guys. It might be a pass rusher. It might be a receiver. Uh, it might be a backup left tackle. That's a swing tackle that can play left and right. But as soon as you go from having a rookie quarterback contract to a, a real vet contract, at some point, you got to start cutting, trimming some fat on that roster and get that roster and that salary cap down a bit. So that, that, that's what we're about to start seeing in Philly is they got to start giving up some of these great players they've had on the offense and defensive side of the ball. Would you rather have a great tackle or a great wide receiver? A great tackle. No doubt. I mean, I, at the end of the day, when you're a quarterback, you got to be able to step into throws and you got to be able to step into throws to deliver the ball accurately down the field. And it really doesn't matter. I mean, you, you can have a top two or three receiver in the game 
Um, you can have kind of a bottom two or three receiver in the game if you have a great offensive line and they can block for four and a half seconds. Because at the end of the day, if you can block for four and a half seconds, you don't need to pay your receivers 20 million bucks a year. Those guys can get open, but you can't get the ball to them if you can't step into throws. So at the end of the day, I'd rather have the offensive line over the super talented receiver. Former number one overall pick Carson Palmer joining us on the program. Your thoughts? The uh, Jets finally get Aaron Rodgers. Let's start there. What would your expectation level be as a Jets fan? Well, you still got to get past Buffalo and you still got to get past Miami. I mean, I, I just don't think it was a situation where Aaron was going to a superstar team. I mean, at the end of the day, when you look at those two rosters and you take, when you, when you compare side by side the Green Bay Packers roster and the New York Jets roster, and you take Aaron Rodgers out of the equation and you just say, what's the next best player? The next best player is Aaron Jones, the running back for the Green Bay Packers. And so when you start really going through this this roster one by one, there might be a a better receiver here or there in New York, but I think the offensive line's better in Green Bay. I think Aaron Jones is a massive impact game-breaking player in Green Bay. The defense is a little better in in New York, maybe, but Quinn and Williams is now looking for a new contract possibly, so maybe he gets traded, the the big D tackle from Alabama. It's a high pick. Um, you know, so you lose Quentin Williams if, if he gets traded or, or maybe, you know, he's talking about maybe a little bit of a holdout. You got that, you know, you got to deal with that. So wait, so you I think just, the Packers roster is as talented as the Jets and maybe more talented? Uh, I, I just don't, I think it's a, a lateral move. I don't think it's drastically okay. that much better where I'm sitting there going, Aaron, you know, if I'm Aaron, I got to get to, I got to get to New York. The, the roster is so good. I think the roster is really similar. I, I just don't think there's a drastic enough difference that he's going from, you know, a B roster in Green Bay to an A plus roster in New York. I just don't see that that great of a talent increase in New York. I think it's a lateral move, and you got to go play in that division. You're leaving the NFC North, where you really only have to worry about Minnesota, and they're kind of hot and cold and hit and miss. Now you're going to the that AFC. You got you got Josh Allen and Buffalo. You got Miami, who can Miami can beat anybody on any given day. That's a really talented roster. So I just think that the division got a little bit tougher. Overall, the conference, you're now in the AFC. It's chocked full of great quarterbacks. You know, I just I, I think it was kind of a lateral move to go to a much, much bigger market. I wondered about this. I've wondered about this for a while. If you were the Jets, does it make more sense to give up two first round picks to get Lamar Jackson, who's younger? And I'm going to have to pay him a lot of money, just like I am Aaron Rodgers. What, so would that make more sense for the Jets to go after Lamar Jackson than a 39-year-old Aaron Rodgers? Yes, if Lamar Jackson didn't have a big asterisk around his name when it comes to injuries. At okay. the end of the day, the, one of the greatest abilities is durability at the quarterback position and availability. If you're available to be on the field for your team, the, the odds go up that you win. Lamar's, th- that's a big question mark around his name right now is, is the last two seasons. He had the knee this last year and couldn't quite get it going again. Uh, he had injuries the year before. So no doubt he's younger, he's explosive, he's got all the talent in the world, but there's just enough worry about these injuries that Aaron might be the right play for the Jets at this moment. How many quarterbacks, not will go in the first round, how many quarterbacks should go in the first round, like a first round grade? I think I think Bryce goes number one, and there's questions around him. He is not a very big human being. At the end of the day, he's he's all of five ten, and I think you know just over two hundred pounds, five eleven, two hundred pounds. I mean that that is not a big specimen, but he's got to go number one, and I really think he will. Outside of that. There's, a, again, a bunch of question marks. Will Levis, there's a bunch of question marks. Richardson, um, you know, CJ. There, there's guys that they're going to get – somebody's going to get overdrafted. Somebody's going to draft probably CJ at number two or three and probably Will Levis in the top five and then Richardson in the top ten. I think when we look back on this draft, there were a couple quarterbacks that were worthy of taking a chance on but not in, in the top five picks. I, I think if, if you got a chance to draft Richardson at like 
18 or 22, you'd feel really good about it because there is so much upside. But before that upside is reached, there is so much development that needs to happen in his game. So I just think, you know, as, as quarterbacks always do, they're going to get overdrafted. Bryce is probably going to go number one. And there's a couple other guys that will be in the top five that when they look back, they would have felt a lot better drafting those guys at 15 or 19 or 23 and so on. What was your uh, rookie contract? My rookie contract was, man, back in the day, it was, I think it was like seven years long. Um, it was a seven year, maybe $50 million deal. I don't remember. Did it change you at all? Yeah, drastically, instantly. I went from, I went from, um, living in a, a crappy, uh, dorm, uh, just outside of USC off the USC campus with way too many roommates and too few of bedrooms and a couple hundred bucks in my name to a lot more than that. <laughs> but did it change your person? You know, we talked to Ryan Leaf yesterday and he said, you know, I didn't handle the money well and, and it changed me. And then I, I thought I was better than people. I, I never have felt like that. Um, it, it, it changed what I was able to do instantly, but I just, I always kind of had that chip on my shoulder. Like, you know, I've got to earn it. I've got to show them that they made the right decision. And I always kind of had that driving me and, and that force behind me, wanting me to continue to work, wanting me. And, and then also, you know, you get that question right away. You don't want to be the guy that got changed. You don't want to be the guy that had the response that Ryan Leaf had. So I always also had that in the back of my mind where I think, you know, I, you know, from a mental standpoint, from what I was trying to do as, as a player and as a teammate, I think I was just driven to, to continue to work, prove to people that it didn't change me and, and, and didn't um, change the outcome of, of the person that I was, but just continue to work and get better at the game and, and be a better teammate. What car did you buy? Uh, well, my baby, I had a, I had a 87 Cadillac Fleetwood that I got in college for $4,200. And I was taking that with me um, to Cincinnati. And then I got hit by a drunk driver on the 110. And he totaled my my Fleetwood, my baby. And then I moved to Cincinnati and I started uh, a relationship with Jeff Weiler Chevrolet. And they hooked me up with a Chevy Avalanche for free. I got to drive a Chevy. Do you remember the old school yeah. Chevy Avalanche? Uh, a big truck. Big truck. No longer in production. They, they didn't make it. Uh, I think I was the only person that actually liked that truck. And that's why Chevy <laughs> discontinued it years later. Did you ever try to replace the Cadillac with another Cadillac? No, no. I, uh, I mean, that was my baby. It was a rolling sofa bed. It was champagne brown. <laughs> and it, it had a max speed of like 52 miles an hour, which doesn't work great in LA, which is probably why I got hit in downtown LA by a drunk driver. Cause I was going too, too slow on the freeway. Did you get, hurt at all in that accident no i uh we were actually getting ready to play kansas state i think like the next day or, or the following day but i remember i was stuck on the 110 the uh, a car was coming horizontally across the highway and that was the drunk driver that hit me i smashed into him a couple other cars smashed behind me and i was getting ready to play kansas state in like two you know maybe two or three days and there's cars whizzing by me nobody stops in la there's a middle, you know, a, a car crash in the middle of the road and cars are swerving around us going 70. It just, just no, you know, no hope and stuck in the middle of the freeway. We found a way to get out of the car and got to the side. Um, and I'm still here to speak about it, Dan. Good to talk to you as always and uh, have fun with the draft. Thanks, Dan. You too. That's Carson Palmer, former number one overall pick. Iceman Trophy winner and... Uh, he uh, is working with Level Select OTC. Those products maintain a healthy and active lifestyle. Always good to talk to him.